imagine for a second that most people around you thought that the ocean had an ending point and once you get there you would fall down a cliff that's what I say to you no my mess would you still have the guts to take everything you own and jump in it perhaps just to prove everyone wrong Okay, but how did we get here? Alright, let's rewind. Well, let's remember the last video of e Baja, baja el brazo. Ahora solamente el palma. Con el gallo. I had met with my friend Tir Carlo, um, an Italian photographer. I wanted to talk to him because I was working on a new film where the dialogue was mostly in Italian. And since I was born in Venezuela, that day I wanted to know if he could tell me at least three different elements that, according to him, have shaped the way in which Italians saw the world. So the first element he mentioned was... And even more, the water is everything. It's not everything, but it's for everything. Yeah, water. Okay, but how does the Italian imagination connect to the symbol of water? I had to solve this. And, and so I, I did remember that you will never see as much water in any other metropolis as you will see in Rome. Some of the places where water comes out are extremely famous. Some more functional than decorated. What is unbelievable is that most of this water is pure water from the springs underneath Rome. That is that one can drink the water. It's pure. Okay, so let's break that thought down. Because being here from central Texas, we know how important water is. Water is what makes this place as beautiful as it is. And when we don't have enough of it around, we know very well the harsh consequences. Yeah, it's burning like crazy. So, if you take into account that Rome was built more than 2,000 years ago. It is pretty unbelievable that the springs of Rome are still flowing the way that they do, despite the traffic, despite all the historical time periods. Water is always there and always drinkable. So I can understand what Pier Carlo says. Knowing that there is so much water around must affect the way that one sees things. But how? Beh, bisogna pensare che l'Italia è un'isola, è quasi un'isola, perché ha l'acqua da tutte le parti e quindi è un paese fatto di porti, di spiagge, di proprio di coste. L'orizzonte è spesso fatto di acqua e fra l'altro noi abbiamo avuto fra i maggiori viaggiatori, basta pensare a Cristoforo Colombo, Magellano, Vespucci, Caboto, quindi l'acqua è un elemento molto importante per il nostro paese per le radici, diciamo, simboliche del nostro paese. The famous Italian writer Dacia Maraini is an extremely prolific writer who had the courage to cross an endless ocean of masculine power and write stories about female characters that 
have inspired generations of other Italian women and men. What did she have to say about water? È una parte presente nella nostra realtà che poi noi troviamo nei nostri mosaici, nei nostre pitture, nella nostra immaginazione. Per me eh, l'acqua è la vita, è la vita, è la... Eh, senza acqua non si, non si può vivere. È anche un ritmo, l'acqua è anche un ritmo. E questo senso credo che sia importante anche per chi scrive. What a great way of putting it. Water as a symbol of a rhythm. Okay, but how can that knowledge help us in, let's say, writing a film? Quindi io consiglio eh, a un giovane aspirante scrittore di usare l'osservazione. Deve essere continuamente eh, attento alla realtà attento alle persone, attento alle cose, ma nei minimi dettagli. Eh, io credo che mh, bisogna partire dal, dal microcosmo per arrivare al macrocosmo e non viceversa. All right, so following that advice and really studying how symbols play a very important role for all Italian artists, one does begin to understand other things that can help in making a film have an Italian touch. For example, the blue veil of the Virgin Mary could also potentially be seen as a representation of the symbol of water. After all, water gives us serenity. As long as there's water around, we know that things will be just fine. And so thinking of the Italian mother as a symbol of water meaning as an entity that is always there, one could also perhaps begin to understand better Fellini. Not only the differences that may exist between the characters in his films that have a mother and those that don't have one, but also the way that he was able to create the most amazing realities that perhaps only a big kid, one that feels always protected, could have possibly begin to dream about. And perhaps Piercarlo didn't really mean to say all of this. In che dimensione so? <laughs> and what he wanted to say was something completely different. I don't know. What do you think? What do you think that he meant with water? <laughs> <laughs>